It looks rather overcast this uh, Thursday morning in mm-hmm. capital city, Kingston. And I suspect we might be getting some rains. Like California, where mm. they're saying that in over 25 years, it's the first time that a hurricane is threatening to hit California. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, we have the second storm in the region. We'll talk more about that later on this morning. Of course, we're here with you until 10 o'clock. DJ Audley is in the building. Yeah. Shells is in the yes, building. Sir. Jody is in the building. And so is Romy. Morning, Romy. I saw the WhatsApp you sent me. Yeah, we're going to talk about that later on for sure, bro. Right now, we say good morning, Bridge Nation. Let's go. And it's now time for WTF. That's what, what the, the f- fact. Now, for the dog lovers out there, we are we know the thing. Oh, they're so precious. Oh, you know, you don't feel like a dog. However, I'm going to feel like that place in the U.S. taking a little too far. But there's a good reason behind it. So here it is. A French bulldog was elected mayor of this small Kentucky town. Yes, an, an actual mayor. So here it is now. Wilbur. <laughs> What's his name? <laughs> Wilbur. <laughs> <laughs> the name cute. I already. I already. Wilbur, a six-month-old French bulldog, was named mayor of Rabbit Hash in Boone County, Kentucky. The tiny town is home to fewer than 500 people, who, as far as pet politics go, are deeply divided. Um, the town has never had a human mayor, but each election cycle, people from around the world cast their votes to elect a canine one. It's mostly just fun and and it's a distraction from the tension of human politics, but each voter pays one dollar per vote and proceeds go to the Rabbit Hash Historical Society. On this election, however, with Mr. Wilbur, Mr. Yes, they raised nearly 23,000 US dollars just from his election. Okay. So you, you are the one who called him Mister, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah for sure. Look at him. I'm sure respect. That's look, at, look at authority. <laughs> what you mean, I'm care to? I mean, big up Wilbur Dan. <laughs> <laughs> Mister Wilbur, who ran the street? Wilbur, Wilbur. <laughs> Mister Mayor. Uh, uh, mayors usually have deputies. Is there a deputy beside? No, I don't see a deputy there. <laughs> no, I'm no. no one post though. So. <laughs> it wouldn't, it wouldn't <laughs> be a post. Yo. Go to get along. <laughs> Wilbur look vexed right now, saying like you know, like the work region. I mean, I want to tell you, I look scared. <laughs> like, what the hell are you guys doing to me? <laughs> but I like the I like the ideology behind it. You know, yeah. a little distraction from the, the human politics yeah. and thing, and, mm. and proceeds go to a worthy cause. Twenty three thousand yeah. US dollars. Yeah. Man, oh man, okay. Wilbur, proud of you. Yes, sir. Yes. And I'm also liking your outfit. <laughs> <laughs> well, a regal attire. Yeah. Man like Wilbur. <laughs> All right. If you don't know my name, call me Wilbur. <laughs> Time for update. update. Morning, Bridge Nation. So Dovi Magnum addresses rumor that she was deported back to Jamaica. Uh-oh. Hey, one thing I'm not going to do is give Dovi Magnum a basket for carry water. <laughs> one thing I'm not going to do. Dancer artist Dovi Magnum is in Jamaica working on new music with various producers. The ball out singer who was... Um, resided in the U.S. for a number of years, returned to the island on September 1 and has been locked in the lab cooking up a number of new singles. I wonder if she could continue for ball out. However, Dovi's <laughs> arrival triggered rumors that she had been deported. She said, I'd come to Jamaica to tap into the energy of the place. I have no problems with immigration. My lawyer has everything covered, Dovi said. So, she's just here to put in the work, get the vibe. You know, if you want the vibe of the Jamaican culture or the dance of Fleury, Afro come at Jamaica. Come, you know, get inspired. And I think that's what she's trying to do right now. Mm-hmm. So she in the lab, I cook up her things. So I could see if she's going to come up with another banger. <laughs> well, I tell you, I understand that the first thing that uh, her first reaction when she heard the rumors. Yeah. She just bought oh, no. ah. I saw that coming. <laughs> mm. Nice. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> yeah, I'd, 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 so, I'd yeah. So kudos <laughs> to her. I look forward to hearing yeah. what she has in store for us. All right. So Dovi. We had her on the program. Yeah. Mm. yeah nice. So nice. Yeah, man. Yeah, every day. She's a day. Do we have general? Yeah, children, you know. Do we have general? I don't know. Yeah, yeah. Sure, have you, she have is. You seen, <laughs> have you seen her live performances? No, no, no. Oh, you I haven't had the pleasure. No, no check her out on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> like anything Sorry. goes. Oh, yeah. yeah, and she pulls people from the audience if they want to join her oh, on stage. Geez, oh, be wow. that a man, a woman, geez, two women, oh. whatever. Oh, it is. Wow. Yeah, she, does, she does have fun. Has ah, fun. Okay, big up. Knows how to have fun. All right. So speaking of someone who knows how fun when she's performing, Nicki Minaj. Can't believe I wanted this slipper, but we'd have to see it. We'd have to take some time for, for, for actually meds if this is true. 
So you know Nikki had a fantastic performance at the VMAs mm-hmm. recently. Mm-hmm. Um, she should put in the word Nikki as she always does when she's performing. Yes. And you know, so she always dressed to the bone. Um, however, she lost one of the what you call that, Joe? The press yeah, on. Yeah, the finger. press on nails. Cause we, we yeah, you know it, go ladies. She performing, she doing her thing when I nail them pop up. Okay, that no sound dramatic, no. What happened as a result is that a fan found the nail and put it up on eBay. Here, how much it go up on eBay at the time? <clears throat> it was at fourteen thousand seven hundred US dollars. Mm-hmm. Now the person who put up on eBay say, you know, cause you know them have to prove it. Cause, you know, people were really yeah. willing to run down this thing and try buy it. So the item item description from the seller says, I was front row in the pit at the VMAs and Nikki's acrylic nail fell off moments before she started to perform. Her crew quickly glued on a on a, um they quickly glued on a replacement. Mm-hmm. The nail was worn by the Queen Nikki. She had that all in caps and all these things. Our phones were locked up during filming, however. I have included photos taken before and after the show to prove authenticity. Mm-hmm. And the person says, I'm happy to provide any further evidence is desired. Now, I know this sounds crazy, mm-hmm. but somebody actually followed through with it in a JoJo. So here we go on. So somebody just posts. <laughs> say, yo, whoa, someone just paid. So remember when saw the nail did I go find out? 14, 14. At the time, that's where it was. Someone just paid 55000 do it. For Nikki, <laughs> after them see the, the proof, Mm-mm. someone just paid fifty five thousand for Nicki Minaj acrylic nail that fell off. So they see the they no. see the proof. Has know. Nikki um? <laughs> she not gonna have that problem with it. She admitted that her nail f- f- um broke. Yeah, you know, I don't know. Nikki you know, she not say it, but it's true. But it's her nails seen. because we saw her yes, entire so outfit, so yeah. we know her fair nails are true. So everybody is in agreement that that's Nikki's that's nail. True. I'm just saying. 55,000 US. Yeah, from 14. Somebody broke her. Piece of No, sir. Yeah, it was worn by the queen. (laughs) Could be worn by my mother. (laughs) I'm not paying 55 US for what? What made you do that? Like, for real. No, you know, know, said Americans take um, being a fan to another limit. It's like it's a different level, really, when you think about it. And the barbs, no normal. And the barbs, them. Her fan fan base is not a normal fan base. And it might cost more come next year. It is going to go up. (laughs) (laughs) And and, uh, I'm just here thinking, God, had I known this, I would have waited um, another day before I did the the, the manicure. You know? (laughs) (laughs) My nails drop off and walk right past it. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Me a piece of, me a piece of, I don't know if they want. No, <laughs> if they not buy that, you have a proof. <laughs> okay. Just, wow. Yeah. All right, let me nail a story here now. <laughs> All right. Dancehall artist Aishana. Woo. I said it a few days ago, and now mm-hmm. it has come to fruition. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And it seems the light of day that she has now signed an international record deal with New York-based Payday Records. Ooh. The Equal Rights singer broke the news on her Instagram uh, page yesterday, sharing photos of the signing with her longtime producer, Skata Borrell, and Payday music executive Patrick Moxie. And it happened in Manhattan in, the U- uh, in New York in the U.S. of A. Uh, Payday Records was relaunched in 2017. That was some 25 years after it was founded by Moxie in 1992. They were known for launching the careers of Jay-Z and Mos Def, according to Music Business Worldwide. Artists launched via Payday Records currently have their music distributed by Ultra Music, also founded by Moxie in the US and Sony in the UK. Now, a little bit more information. In July 2015, Jamaican singer Omi's cheerleader remix became Ultra's first number one on the Billboard Hot 100. Ultra later released his gold-selling Me For You album. Dressing the part of a successful woman, Aishana donned, donned uh, a matching hot pink pants and blazer with a white tube top on the inside to show off, you guessed it, a little skin. Mm-hmm. And her post read, signed, sealed, and ready to deliver. Mm. I'm, a su- I'm super excited to announce that I just signed my first international record deal. Thank you, Patrick Moxie at Payday Records, at Ultra Publishing, and the entire team. She continued, I'm so grateful to have been, to be a part of my this this journey. Thank you, Scatter Burrell, for always believing in me. I'm so happy <coughs> to share this moment with you. Well, I mean, it's not surprising because she herself and Scatter have been a long time. Uh, 
<clears throat> collaborators. Yes. Yeah. So. Big up scatter. No surprise there. Oh, yeah, man. Oh, man, miss. <laughs> oh, man, miss. What you're missing is the last uh, part of her, her, her statement. She <laughs> says, to my amazing fans and everyone that believed in me, thank you. This is only the beginning. Oh, okay. I believe you, You're still Aishana. missing something? Yeah. I believe you, Aishana. <laughs> Great things to come, my girl. Mm -hmm. yeah. One true. It's a good right look. True. It's a good look. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I'm so happy for her. Yeah. yeah. And I'm yeah. so excited to see yeah. what she have of our sleeve and our team. I know it's a beer good thing. I uh, agree. I agree. So let's go back to what happened at Reggae Sumfest. <laughs> do, do, do you think that this in any way um, influenced, um, uh, you know, no. the deal? Did, did the attention that she got? I mean, I think, out so of I that? think this has been in the. Oh, the attention. Work. Yeah. I think, mm. um, because, I mean, when you get right down to it, most a lot more people are talking about her after Reggae Sumfest uh, more than maybe it. Everybody else, or yeah, um, many others. Maybe that's I, a part of Remember, it, in the world of entertainment, um, sometimes bad news they embrace that because controversy it, thing. Uh, it sells. But I would feel that like this record deal has been in the works for a while, and well, I feel like the to me, the icing on the cake is Ed Sheeran and her Ed yeah. Sheeran yeah. collaboration. Yeah, yeah. because I feel that like song, that song, yeah, because oh, a foreign, that a foreign collaboration thing, right? kind of said, yeah. All right, yeah. so if she could have do that and she never have like. You know, yeah. deal with nobody. It was just her. Yeah, I agree. Really, mm -hmm. imagine what we can do. Yeah. If she, what she can yeah. do. If she and, have a team. And so. just to add, you know, the thing we're going to some place. That that is local fanfare, in my opinion. No, like, but gonna, everything goes viral. Yeah, shows, but no, but just as like in the case of like for payday, like you know, payday a big big label like them 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 them. I I, I would hope that they don't <laughs> follow up viral stuff. Fingers cause crossed. Them think they can die out. You know what I mean? I think. I think really that that collab with Ed, Ed is a is a big deal, bigger than what we want. And I think, to think some persons were concerned that this might have affected you that know, vibe, with that vibe or that career, you know, wherever she was planning to take it. Because mm -hmm. a lot of persons were more upset about it than being okay with saying, "Oh, it's just Aishana." They were really upset about it. So, but we still the music Look, go on the video. I understand a video is going to be made with herself and Ed. Just imagine what's gonna happen to her career after <laughs> that. Eddie, better I grease mean, the waistline. Eddie. I hey, I want you. <laughs> Sorry, I was actually reading. I was actually reading uh, the story for the most part. But was she on the screen? I shot. Yes, yeah, she man, was. She was, man. Yeah, man. So, Romeo, where is she? So, so Romeo. Oh, there she is. Because I, I read about the outfit. Yeah, the, the outfit. <laughs> um, but I didn't actually yeah, see. Man, oh, there, it, there it is. There. Yeah. That's hot. And there's a line that said she Pink. showed some skin. Um, skin? skin? Yeah. yeah, skin, yeah so. Right around the neck. I'm yeah. just. This is just. Um, <laughs> just make sure that I'm verifying the story. Actually, yeah. <laughs> Research purposes. I'm for verifying. <laughs> sure, she looks fellas. Good. Sure, she, she looks good. Yeah, man. <laughs> in all honesty, Skata, you're there too, but yeah, I, yeah. I, yeah. I, and Patrick, you're yeah. there too. Yeah, but like the, 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 Aishana looks good. The plaques around the back and things. Yeah, yeah but you know. Oh, that's there too. <laughs> <laughs> That was... Update. Got that right. <laughs> Let's go on now to our uh, proverb of the day and our pet peeve of the morning. Have fun, guys. <laughs> you know what I know. <laughs> All right. So our proverb of the day, Shell. Mm -hmm. Bridge Nation. Cockroach never write before chicken. Cockroach. Never write before chicken. When I say right, I mean like right or wrong. That's okay. Yes. Okay. Cockroach. All right, so that's like how the world set up, you know, nature set up. Mm. Roach and chicken are really Greek, or no, chicken no, shell no. roach, though. No. I saw it go, right? Yes, like, yes, yes. So if cockroach never write before chicken, it, well, all me I get from this is that no matter what the roach do, mm -hmm. the chicken does not go see things his way. Nago not can agree with him. It does not go work. I just, it uh, end up so it just get shell. True. Regardless, no matter what. Yes. In a nutshell, mm -hmm. um, that's basically what it is, oh. shell. Good job. <laughs> so the meaning of this proverb, cockroach never write before chicken, mm -hmm. is one will never be judged fairly by one's enemy. Oh, yeah, man. That's a real so, thing. Yeah, man. Yeah. Cockroach yeah, man. never write before chicken. Okay. Uh, yes. I like I. that one. So, heading over to pet peeve, you know, pet peeve are things that others do or probably say to you that you find annoying, irritating, or even upsetting. upsetting. Mm. Just have a pet peeve for this morning. Yeah, man, I'm my pet peeve this morning, no, Bridge Nation. Here we go on. Uh, my pet peeve, I think it's a simple one. I don't know if people really sit down and miss this. But I hate JoJo. Mm -hmm. you know, I'm going to use the word hate after. No, I don't hold mean hate. Nah, oh, no, no, I don't ah! hate JoJo. Oh. Yeah, sorry. No. I'm a JoJo. Fine for listening. <laughs> 
But I hate Jojo, <laughs> Richie. <Yeah>. Oh, me? <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> I, I seriously dislike when people project their fears onto you. Oh, my goodness. You understand what I mean? Yes. So what that mean, people? That means, say, yo, just because somebody says that them can't do what you are, what you are set out for, do, mm-hmm. them start just saying, ah, oh, sort of bad vibes here. Oh, way. wow. You know, not knowing, say, because them within themselves not believe them can do it. So, them just, so if you say, yo, you know, I want to turn a police officer, I want to turn an astronaut. The man said, you sure you want to do that because this time just such sent beer bad energy your way. Just because them those to themselves being able to do that. So I kind of, yeah, in my, in my life, kind of just distance myself from them people. Like Hawks. Yes, yeah, so people I, who do that. I had annoying. to learn this. Mm-hmm. I tell people all the time, I would probably be a singer and actress right now. Big, big, serious, serious yeah. thing. Because it's something that I loved so much. Mm-hmm. And then I started to listen to listen people and said, no, man, I'm not, no, you... That yeah, not work. Not I know, work. like when I see people like Lizzo, when I see just women my size, my uh-huh. you know, black women just doing it, and I'm you like, you just know, tell yourself it's not too late, Jody. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm yeah. saying, but you still I, got the talent. Mm-hmm. I've heard it. I've, I've heard it several <laughs> times. Facts. Yeah, that's done. And it's like you listen to these people, and you you could have done great yeah. things, but you listen because yeah, the they listen had fear. They had a fear. And they yeah. probably just never wanted you to do it in the first yeah, place because they knew that you had the potential. Mm-hmm. So you have to be careful. Definitely a pet peeve. Yeah. Because, <laughs> and I'm like this. And when I learned this, um, I, I said, even to my family members, I understand what you are saying now. Yep, but just know that me, I'm going to do me. So everybody yeah. learned that. Uh, anybody in my family would tell you that. Mm-hmm. If Jody says she could do something, do no it. matter where you are, go out with you now. Yeah. Just know I'm going to do it. Which is right. Because you're not going to make me regret yeah. anything in my life. If I, yeah, I know it's so. a, I know it's a pet peeve <laughs> carry too. Google when when you're off um, a little bit. Mm-hmm. Google Mata Wash. All right. Okay. Yes. Ah. And, and look at that story. All you, right. You, you, you're gonna be totally shocked. All right. No yeah, problem. It's a great, yeah. great voice. Let me tell you, you a lot of people would never believe that that voice that is her. There you go. A group yeah. called Black Box Mata Wash. Look, look up that. All right, no problem. Yeah, well, that's and my pet that's the pet peeve yeah. this morning. Is that something that also upsets you? Uh, September is Prostate Awareness Month, and the Minister of Health and Wellness, Dr. Christopher Tufton, has now turned to women to encourage men to get screened for prostate cancer. Interesting. In his message to mark Prostate Cancer Awareness Month, which is being observed during September, Dr. Tufton highlighted the fear and apprehension that most men have about prostate cancer screening and pointed out that women have the ability to positively influence their men in this regard. He said, and I quote, I therefore call upon our women to encourage us and to hold our hand even as we contemplate the screening and regular checkups that are essential. He indicated that prostate cancer is the most commonly diagnosed cancer in Jamaican men and the leading cause of cancer-related deaths among the male population. With us this morning is Dr. Alfred Dawes, and he'll be sharing some facts about prostate cancer and why it is important for men to get screened early. Good morning, Dr. Dawes. Welcome. How are you doing today? Morning. Hey, good morning. Thanks for having me. All right. Uh, what can you tell us about uh, what it's like out there as you did your daddy duties earlier? <laughs> <laughs> it's, is it hectic? <laughs> oh, no, no, no. Um, I was out riding. My oh, oh. son is overseas. Oh, oh I okay. see. I see. All right. I thought you were doing daddy duties. <laughs> no worries. Always good to have you on the program, Dr. Alfred Dawes. And this morning we're looking at prostate cancer in Prostate Cancer Awareness Month. Uh, first of all, Doc, what is prostate cancer? Uh, the prostate is a gland that is right at the base of the penis, and it sits between the bladder and uh, the, the roots of the penis, you could say, and it produces this, the, the fluid that comes out in the ejaculate. It's about the size of a guinea, and um, it can get bigger with age, but the problem is that some of these cells in the, in the prostate can turn into cancer cells when they stop listening to the, the commands of the body to stop growing after a while. And, and that is essentially prostate cancer. Mm-hmm. starts by invading the surrounding tissues, may have difficulty urinating, may invade the nerves, you may have impotence, uh, pain, and then it's, it spreads commonly to the, the spine. And uh, unfortunately, many men are presenting when it is already spread to the spine and they're coming in with weakness, paralysis, and back pain. Mm-hmm. 
So um, you've, you, you've also answered my next question, which is pretty much how it affects men. But, but uh, let's go back to what causes it, Doc? Well, you know, we, we, we still don't know what are the, the main causes for, for cancer. As a matter of fact, you can just attribute cancer uh, number one causes to, to bad luck because many persons don't have a risk factor. But what we do know is that as a black man, you do have an increased risk of getting prostate cancer. And not only that, you, are, you have a risk of getting it at a younger age and more a, a more aggressive form of, of prostate cancer. And greetings, greetings, Dr. Da. Shell's here. Um, what, are, what are some of the symptoms or signs of prostate cancer? Well, the early ones that you may see are trouble urinating. Um, you may have difficulty starting or stopping the, the urine. Uh, the, we said that you start to hit your shoes instead of hitting the wall. Mm. Um, you may see blood in the urine, blood in the ejaculate of the semen. And uh, you may find out that you have erectile dysfunction. And uh, when it has al already spread, you may have uh, weight loss, um, bone pain, pain in the pelvis, and pain in the back. So if you're having any of these symptoms, yeah, that one, one of the things is that the, the urinary symptoms can be caused by another condition that we call benign prostatic hypertrophy. Um, and and that, is, that, that is when the prostate itself just gets enlarged. Um, in a case like that, there's a lot of overlap with the symptoms with prostate cancer. And uh, it's best to, if you're having any urinary symptoms, go and check it out because BPH is very common in the population. Mm -hmm. So, and you say go and check it out. It. Yes, doc. So I was yeah. about I was about to ask um, when then should men start uh, testing for prostate cancer and and please um, also go on to tell us why there is this fear it seems among the male population <laughs> to test. Well. You know, people are, are hung up on, on this whole digital rectal examination where you, you insert your, your finger into the rectum to, um, to feel the prostate because it is sitting right in front of the rectum. So it, it's because a lot of the times prostate cancer starts on the outside of this organ, you can feel it from the outside on the surface. Um, rather than BPH, that usually starts on the inside. So feeling that that prostate, the size of it, and if there's any irregularities or nodules, is an important part of screening. And unfortunately, that is what most men are hung up on, and they don't want to undergo that part of it. They think it's invasive. Um, but it really and truly, you know, it's one component. The other component is the, the blood test or the PSA, uh, this is a protein that is produced by the prostate. Not uh, at certain sizes, the prostate, the, the PSA is going to be less than four, right? But if it gets enlarged, or if you have prostate cancer cells making more PSA than usual, it's going to go up. So I would um, recommend all Jamaican men to start screening at the age of 40. In some countries, they would tell you at the age of 50, but because you know, uh, we are seeing more aggressive variants and earlier variants uh, because of our race. Uh, obesity is a risk factor that is becoming more prevalent. And um, men who have on a little weight, uh, they ought to be looking carefully at, at, at this disease as well. But rule of thumb, once you get to 40, get your annual PSA and DRE or digital rectal examination. And it's best for you to just find it early where the treatment is easier, cheaper, and more effective. It's so, not something to be afraid of. So let's be absolutely clear, Doc. There, there's no way to circumvent that, that particular initial um, test. Well, yeah, that, that is actually controversial because we have to look at it now from practical versus ideal. We know that Jamaican men are getting advanced cancer at, at one point. There was a study that said that you know we had the highest rate in the world, but that 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 has been questioned. Um, what we do know is that we have one of the highest death rates from prostate cancer in the world. It's it's the number one killer of all cancers, male and females in Jamaica. About 850 men die every year from prostate cancer, and the reason is that we are diagnosing prostate cancer when it is late. 
Now, the ideal situation is to get the DRE and the PSA. And at some point, we have to examine our local situation and say, boy, the men are not coming in. So should we be just offering them the PSA if they want to, rather than holding out and saying, no, you have to do it the right and proper way? Maybe if we just say, get the PSA done, more men will feel comfortable coming in. And an abnormal PSA will direct us as to who needs further screening, and then we can capture more persons with prostate cancer at an earlier stage. That's controversial, and it's a part of the reason why we don't have a, a national screening program for prostate cancer. But I think at some point we have to look at it and say what we are doing, looking for the ideal situation, is simply not working. So we have to try something different. All right. It's the first time I'm hearing that coming mm -hmm. from a doctor, actually. Yeah. So you did say it's quite controversial. Mm -hmm. um, doc, is, pro is prostate cancer acquired or, or inherited? Or neither? Well, you do. Um, you, if you have a family history, a blood relative, um, you know, parent or, or um, a, a brother uh, who has been diagnosed with prostate cancer, you are going to have increased risk. Uh, breast cancer as well, especially if it is linked to, to genetics then you, you will have an increased risk of prostate cancer. Okay. But the biggest risk factors really are your, 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 um, your age over 40 mm -hmm. and um, once you're a black man. Hmm. How, how prevalent then is it amongst the, uh, the male population? Well, when you, when you look at um, prostate cancer, I think it's about 23 per 100,000 um, men who are, are, are getting this. It is by far the most common cancer in Jamaica. It's more common than breast cancer. It's more common than cervical cancer, colon cancer. Uh, so when you're talking about one single cancer that is responsible for most of the cancer cases in Jamaica, that is prostate cancer right across the board. The view has been put forward that um, by Minister of Health that, uh, you know, he's encouraging the women to encourage the men uh, mm -hmm. to... to, um, to to um to go to get the screening done, but what do you believe uh, personally doc, that can be done to encourage more Jamaican men to get screened early? It's unfortunate that a lot of times when men come in my office, it is a girlfriend or a wife who has dragged them there because men don't want to to, to come in for anything, whether it's blood pressure, sugar tests, um, prostate cancer screening, until something. Is, is has gone wrong and at that point is not really uh, screening anymore it is a, a diagnostic evaluation because you started to have um, symptoms you know, because of disease progression um, education is a big part of it and uh, you know as I was saying before it's it's controversial but we ought to be looking at maybe offering men the the PSA test by itself if they feel like that is what they want. Offer both options mm -hmm. and um, explain that it is the PSA alone does not replace it. But if that is what you feel comfortable uh, doing, then come in and, and, and get your blood test. Mm -hmm. I suspect that throughout the month there will be many avenues that persons can learn more about this disease and uh, we'd love to hear more about that. So if you have t any information to share as we go along, Doc, you can always pass on to us, all right? All right. Thank you so much for your time today, and have a great day. You too. Take care. All right. Dr. Alfred Dawes, our very special guest, looking at uh, prostate cancer during mm -hmm. Prostate Cancer Awareness Month. He's the founder and CEO of Windsor Wellness Center. It's time for the, the Secret, Secret Sound game. game. Here's the sound that we ask you to identify. There are about seven or eight callers. Let's get to it. One of the clues is that there are two things happening with that sound. Mm -hmm. Other clues are... Food, kitchen, and water. Work with that and give us the correct answer, please. Good morning, you're on the air. Welcome to the Secret Sound Game. Hello. Hello. Good morning and Hello. welcome. How are you doing? Good morning. Thank you for calling. Who is this? Joseph. Hi, Joseph. Ah, Joseph. Good to hear you as always. Indeed. Uh, I am thinking, I just speaking up that one. Somebody um, eating up some water. Stopping a percolator so it can make some tea and they're opening the microwave. Mm. 
So you say someone heating up water? Yeah. And and you and using the microwave at the same time. Yeah. Well, I don't want to have Jojo smile over there and I look to the sky. <laughs> what the, the first the first reaction was like, let me see what Joseph is saying. Mm. And then we saw her giving a signal. Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> Joseph! Yeah. Wah, wah, wah. And me say work, work, li- say work a little harder. <laughs> Joseph. That's all I can say. Work mm-hmm. a little harder. Let's go in one more time. Good morning. Welcome to the Secret Sound Game. Top of the bridge, up and go. You're on right, right now. Good morning. Morning, Carla. Morning. Yes. Hi, morning. All right. We got you. Oh, hi. I wasn't sure if it was me. <laughs> yeah, you, uh, you see yes, everyone. Sir. Who's this? This is Tracy. Pardon? Tracy. Tracy, yeah. Uh, Thank you for calling, Tracy. Tracy. Where are you calling from? Kingston. All right. All right. Nice, nice hearing from you. Um, you heard the sound? Yes, but I don't have two options. I have one. You only yes. have one? All right. right. <laughs> Let's see what that uh, leads to. I believe it's a garbage disposal, trash compactor, in the sink, washing dishes, getting stuff down. That's what I believe it is. That's what you believe it is, Tracy. Yes, I do. Oh. And tell that don't say. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yo, I got my government name. <laughs> well, Tracy. Wink, wink, wink. And she's such a nice lady. Yes. Sorry, Tracy. <laughs> Let's go in one more time. We're out of rush because there are so many callers. Good morning. You're on the air. Welcome to the Secret Sound Game. Bless up, Rich. Bless up, bro, bro. How you do? Ah, uh, this is um, good, man. Good. man from Manchester. Yeah, man. See you, man. Yes, hi. Richard, it sounds like someone standing in front of the refrigerator, taking something out of it and then put it into the microwave. Standing in front of a refrigerator, taking something out, out of, of it, it. And, and putting that something in into the, the microwave. <laughs> Jody sips her Yo. tea. Now, well, I tell you. Now, Jody has smiled over there, though. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just send cross off road again, oh? Rit? Yeah, man. Wah, wah, wah. Cha-cha. Sorry, bro. <laughs> Oh, boy. Pains me. Pains Calls me. are coming in from all over. Good morning. You're on the air. Welcome. Hello. Thursday morning. Secret sound game. You're on. Lucky you. Hello. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. QNS? No. No, this is Hamilton. Hi. Hamilton, Hi. by the way, where are you called from, Hamilton? Uh, in Thomas. Oh, you're in St. Thomas? St. Thomas. Okay. Okay. You weren't out there with placards recently <laughs> demonstrating because of the road conditions? Uh, no. Okay. <laughs> but I hear it's kind of bad, isn't it? Yeah, it's very bad. It's very bad. Yeah. Very deplorable. Oh, my goodness. Well, listen, man. Here's something uh, to brighten your day. Give us mm-hmm. the right answer. We have something for you called a... That gift package. You ready for it? Uh, yeah. All right. All right. Let's right. hear your answer. Uh, we can hear water boiling. Uh, so, uh, water boiling in a microwave while somebody is realizing that the water is boiling. Uh, over boiling and then opening the microwave and taking it out. This man has tried so many times. Listen to the sound one more time. That a that and then Hamilton sounded more confident than he has for a long time when he started off by saying, you can hear water boiling. And then he goes on with further explanations. Hamilton, St. Thomas, take this, son. Sorry, bros. I know the roads get fixed soon, all right? Let's go in one more time. Let's go in one more time. Oh, my goodness. I think this might be the final call of so many more. Okay, well, I tell you. Hello. Yes, good morning. Uh, Hi, how are good you? Morning. Good, good morning. Good morning. Who's this? Yeah, um, I'm Shana K. Hi, I think Shana K. Yeah, I um, have two options. I don't know if you want them. You want to give me option number one for starters? All right. Option number one sounds like the toilet is flushing. And the second one is like you're traveling in a bus and the wind is blowing. Hey, Richie, what about that? She's squeezing two power. Maybe she's one of them modern. Sean K. Yeah. She's one of them modern kitchen there with the toilet there. <laughs> <laughs> Where are you calling from, Sean K? 
Kingston. Kingston. She not that far. Joseph was wrong. Mm-hmm. Tracy was wrong. That's right. R- Ray was wrong. Uh-huh. Hamilton didn't make it. Sean K. Yes. Are you ready? Repeat. Are you ready? <laughs> I'm not sure. Come, calm, be calm, be calm, be calm. Breathe. Because. Wink, wink, wink. Not the verdict. <laughs> Sorry, Shauna Kay. And thanks for participating. And thank you to all of our other callers. Yeah. <laughs> that takes us to the end this morning of uh, the Secret Sound game. Oh, of course, geez, there were geez. many more callers. But, uh, uh, well, we'll get a chance to play another time soon. Yeah, all right? Good morning, Robo. Good morning, good morning, good morning, Jamaica. Ah. And good afternoon, London. That's right. Course. Very wet afternoon here in London. And um, uh. you probably heard the, some of the news coming out of the UK that the uh, Queen has taken a turn for the worse. Yes, mm-hmm. yes. Um, and it, it, we are uh, just uh, standing by. There was a, uh, a lot of frantic behavior. There was a, a, a special um, parliament sitting because of energy crisis that we're going through mm-hmm. and that was interrupted people passing notes with n- normal notes are like just whispered but notes flying around and news programs mm. uh you know gearing up to schedule a lot of changes um because uh this situation we've all been here before we've all seen it before um in our own personal lives um it is uh looking how it's looking basically mm. Yeah, when, um, when, I, when I saw when I saw that um, all the family the members family, were yeah. immediate family members were informed and all of that and the concerns that uh, the yes. medical uh, yes. team at Buckingham Palace are ex- expressing, we definitely um, thought that something yeah, is happening so, there with the Queen. Yeah. Uh, she's been sitting yeah. on the throne for some seventy years, and yes, uh, is yeah. the longest reigning monarch, and um, she has done a long stretch, mm. and she's ninety six years of age, right? So she's ninety six re- years yeah, of age, well up and, in age. Um, this country and as many people that's uh, obviously generations before us who are still alive remember when she when she was swept into uh her, her the high the high seat mm-hmm. the high throne mm-hmm. um and they're only used to that way of life no other way of life so when uh and when and if the the situation happens where the queen is to pass there's gonna be uh this the the fabric when i say the fabric of british people here brother they mm-hmm. they are um uh, it's gonna in, in they're just fully my immersed opinion, in the, in the gonna, monarchy it's, yeah it's mm-hmm. gonna it's gonna be a a, a serious turn brother mm-hmm. i mean n- the likes that we never know of because we've never known anything like that in our i suppose in our community we know of a queen right in right England, mm. and obviously jamaica's had its uh experience with with, with uh this monarchy mm-hmm. for many years but um here in the uk um so it's, gonna re- it's really going to take a turn, Richard. In, t- in terms of succession, um, I, I know that um, Charles would Charles. be heading up as, as king, king. I, I suspect. Yes, he's going to be. Uh, but he, as I said before, mm-hmm. nothing like it before, mm-hmm. nothing like it after. The su- mm-hmm. So the succession will just be pomp and ceremony, as they mm-hmm. say. It's just pomp and ceremony. Yeah. What it will mean, Richie, it's going to be nothing. It's like your mother leaving you. Everything after that means nothing mm. and and that's what uh, the the public here are going to be faced with here in the yeah. uk how it affects us as a community as a country jamaica and 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 obviously countries that she's uh she's been the head of state for who knows but it's not going to yeah. be the same she has been she has been up in age and uh i'd say that they would have had a, a lot of time in order to put certain plans in place and uh, for succession and for those who are taking over the reins and for them to really understudy and and learn, um, you know, th- th- their ways and how they do okay. things. So um, f- f- funny enough, you say that yeah. understand and learn. You had you had uh, obviously as we 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 watch was watching comically when uh, her grandson came to Jamaica a few was it was it a few year mo- ago or about a few months oh, ago y- some months ago. Well, months ago, yeah. and we mm-hmm. all saw how that panned out. I mean, that was just like a disaster, like unfolding in front of your eyes, mm. your very eyes that people are like in 2022 who are entitled and, and hold such high position, don't know how to just deal with people. And and we're watching from our lenses here in the UK, like, watcha, <laughs> where am they, Jamaica downtown? 
And we're looking and we're thinking, bro, you, you loosen yeah. up, man. Yeah. This is this is real life people. This is us. It, so you it, can it, imagine. Yeah. It is safe to assume then that Megan and um and Harry would have also been notified, I suspect. Yes, they would be notified, but there's gonna be no um there's gonna be no space in any column inches of any newspaper or any news reports for those two names. Mm. Not at this point. Is that bad? None whatsoever. Wow. No. All right, all right. No chance. Yeah. The only people be talking about Meghan and Harry is the fans of Meghan <laughs> and Harry. Sure. At this point, that's a complete rub out. Wow, mm-hmm. wow. Well, listen, that's a lot mm-hmm. <laughs> on that subject. Uh, listen, I, I listen. I'm only you know I I I come to I I hire come here <laughs> because I just want to deliver. I just want to be a part of my family. This is yeah. our culture. Yeah. This is what we want to celebrate. But yeah. obviously, news out external, and I say I say it boldly. External. Awesome. It's, it's not my. This ain't my party here. But um, I as I said, this party is coming to uh, an almighty crash, and uh, how it affects the UK, you will feel the reverberations everywhere. Yeah, yeah. I got you loud and clear, bro. Yeah, man. And I'm not going to go on a, onto no Liverpool matter right now because there ain't no good news <laughs> there. So. No, um, all for one. Yeah, one for. Uh, uh, <laughs> no, it like, pains your heart, doesn't it? Um, it's painful. Mu- music should light. <laughs> music will lighten the mood. So it's I wonder, to you uh, odds, ready. odds. I, I know you wear a uh, you wear a certain shirt when you feel like it, yeah. depending on the weather and everything. Yeah. Can you do us a favor? Yeah, man. Can you just play out some music so that we can turn Richard's mic down and Shell's <laughs> mic down and, and let us just Drown. enjoy the Drown. wonderful sound in the afternoon of Jamaica. Shouts to <laughs> everybody right now connected on Beat 106 and right now they're hearing us crystal clean streaming on Sounds Robo good. Ranks Radio. We, the world, is yours. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Our next guest is a revolutionizing, you hear that? reggae praise and worship artist with his soulful ballads and uplifting praise tunes blending smooth distinct vocals with musical hooks and slurs that can appease the most discerning listener jason mighty imparts a glimpse of a genuine relationship with his savior to the forefront of his songs he you know he's just a general richie and i think it's an honor having him here Teresa with us. Welcome to I the think bridge. It, I think it is fair to say that he's a mighty man of God. <laughs> Which is right. <laughs> Greetings, Jason. Jason Mighty. What's up, what's up, what's up, Bridge <laughs> FM? Yeah. Blessing, so Richard B. Bless up, my bro, what's up? Bless up, uh, bless up, my brother. Good to have you, Jason. Been a while, been a minute. <laughs> been a minute. <laughs> yeah, but uh, we're happy to have you this morning uh, to talk to us about your journey in this uh, music and entertainment industry. And uh, and even by extension, your ministry. Uh, give, get us up to speed with what's been happening with Jason Mighty in, in the recent past. Well, uh, for those who don't know, I, I migrate about ten years ago. Um, I live in Canada with my wife, my two kids, and um, you know, I never give up the music. I always doing it, you know, because the Lord has blessed with a global ministry. Um, you know, and my philosophy is that wherever you go, your your ministry follow you, right? Mm-hmm. And um, so I, I love Jamaica. Jamaica is a place where, man, it's, it's a breeding pot for, for reggae music, right? And, you know, but, you know, sometimes the Lord call you send you in a different path, you know what I mean? And I come in a cold part of Jamaica, Canada, man, it's, it's so cold here. It's totally <laughs> yeah, different yeah. from what I used to, right? <laughs> but, you know what I mean? That has been good, you know, still traveling my music, still producing music, still making it sound, still, mm-hmm. you know, reaching people, still loving people, still doing a lot for the kingdom. You know what I mean? A lot, a lot, man. It's a lot. Respect, respect. Now, Jason, greeting. Shell's here. Um, as, a, as a gospel artist, right, um, how would you describe your music? Because I, I feel people kind of fail to believe that even in the world of gospel music, you have different type of artists with different types of songs. How would you describe yours? Well, let's let's say um, the, the Jason matter everybody know, I would say like, you know, at my ministry, it, it, it breach always reach a wide audience it, it reach the young people it reach older people it reach middle-aged people it reach everybody because i sing song like catch a fire jesus bigger but then i still give a song like show for now on my album that is an international r b vibe so you know my ministry always it always got us blessed me where i can i can do pop track i do r b track i do dancehall i do reggae you know what i mean so mm-hmm. I, would, I would call myself a musician i don't really consider myself as an as an you know individual um 
genre for music. I, I consider myself as a musician, and a musician, you, you dabble in different type of music, you know, different genre, you know what I mean? Whatever comes out of you, it flows, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? So it's hard to categorize myself in terms of a genre. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm trying to figure it out. When you left Jamaica and uh, headed up to Toronto, is it Toronto that you're at? Yes. Yes, and, and, and so on. How, how, how was it in terms of getting settled in, getting your music uh, aired, um, getting uh, shows? Um, what was the transition like for you? Was it challenging? Well, it was challenging, but when I moved to Canada, I moved to an international label here, um, they start promotion, and they uh, take the ministry globally. Because when I was in Jamaica, yes, you know, we're there Jamaica, but, you know, we need to have that international push to take us to another level internationally. You know, and I didn't have that. So I was there, I was traveling, doing my stuff in Jamaica, but I didn't have somebody to represent me globally. And mm -hmm. when I moved from here, I, I came into a contract and a label that take me to another level. You know, so, you know, the global ministry that I have now, I didn't do it by myself, but I walked into that dementia of a, of, a, of a label. So, of course, when I came, it was different because when I come here, I was one of the biggest reggae gospel artists in the country. Mm -hmm. But um, the way other do music here is very hard. Richie is hard to break mm -hmm. in the in in Canada because you realize like Justin Bieber, Drake, all those guys, they must have to leave Canada to break, mm -hmm. right? Because the music industry here is not it's, it's a multicultural country, and mm -hmm. everybody come with their own look at look look a thing. So it's really hard for you to focus on the genre and break. So you know it was tough, but you know when God is in the midst, you know anything at all we can accomplish, and I I did accomplish that through a label um, that I was working called this type of promotion. Okay. It wasn't that bad for me, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. Give thanks, give thanks. Now, on to the music, further on to the music. Talk to us about your, your singles, Tell of Your Love and Crazy. What was the inspiration behind those songs? Well, it's it's it's, it's an inspiration for me. It was like, you know, um, when I'm going to do my, this is my sixth through the album, and, you know, I was working on it in, in the midst of pandemic. You know, and man, everything was going crazy because I love my music come from Jamaica straight. Mm -hmm. And it was hard for me to connect. It was hard for me to, I want to come there to do some recording and it was too much crazy. So that song really come up when I was like, man, it's so crazy. You can't believe what you want. When I pray, if you think I'm crazy, you know, so, mm -hmm. you know, it, it was just one of them things that we're trying to get everything, trying to bridge it, the gap of getting, you know, getting the product, uh, the, the, the product done. And I couldn't. So the song really inspired by that, by COVID really, you know. Mm -hmm. All right. Um, well, we're going to play. Which one do we have, Audley? We're going to play. Um, but we have both of them. All right. So we have both of them, um, Jason. And we're going to um, allow the Bridge Nation to hear them in a little while from now. But um, where can listeners actually find you and support your music? Well, uh, well, everything is online. Everything is online. Now my, my stuff is on all streaming platform. You know, it's on Spotify. It's on Apple Music. It's on iTunes. It's on Amazon, it's all, all over the place. So, you know, when once you Google Jason Might, you'll find anything. You know, my brand new album, um, Overflow, it's, it's, it's here. It's, 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 it's killing the place right now. It's, it's doing well. People love it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? As I said, a wide dimension of songs. And then just, you can go on there and just check out what's going on, you know, and, and stuff and stream it, right? Any collaborations on the album? Man, this album packed with, with some legend. We, we have Papa Sun on the album. Wow. We have Marv Prominence on the album. We have Gadi Gadi on the album. We have Sharon Garden on the album. We have DJ Nicholas on the album. One of the artists, artists in Canada right now, young artists right now, called That Journey. Uh -huh. He's on the album. So it's out the album packed with a lot of legendary. Because I, I go back way back in the roots, right? Yeah. So I wanna I wanna pack this album with, with 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 a few of the legends, you know, and stuff. So it's an amazing album, man. You know, it's something to, to listen. To. Nice. Well, all right. We're going to get a chance to at least hear and play two of the songs. I'm going to play, first of all, Tell Off Your Love. And in closing, uh, I want you to introduce that on the bridge right now, Jason, while we say to you, thanks for being our guest and best wishes going forward. Big up yourself. Big up, man. Big up the bridge FM. You don't know. Big up, Richie. Big up, my bro. You don't know. Blessing. This is Jason Mighty live on the bridge FM. And you listen to my new track, Tell Off Your Love. All right? You can't believe what you are when I praise if you think I'm crazy. Yes. So you don't know what my life was before Jesus saved me. Read your fam. Yes, somebody said that. Boom. 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 Yeah, <laughs> Real pro. <laughs> Way to go. Thank you, Jason. Take care. So as, as it has come to me, um, four new iPhones, including the iPhone 14, the 14 Plus, and new uh, Pro models. 
um, <laughs> are now in the marketplace. Uh, um, they have some uh, some Apple watches as well with new things yeah. like temperature sensors. <laughs> and I understand too for the ladies, I guess that yeah. uh, they can these these watches can controversially help track ovulation cycles. Okay, mm. interesting, interesting feature. And then. Apple is also hitting the market with some what they call some souped-up ear pods <laughs> with better noise cancellation and six hours of listening time per charge. Oh boy, yeah, they're trying to make uh, <laughs> something of it. And uh, a big thrust that they're on to have, have read mm -hmm. is that they're trying to um, up the ante as it relates to um, online advertising. Uh, oh, Trying more. to make some money from that source as well, because I think they maybe feel that they've kind of peaked somewhat or mm. plateaued yeah. uh, as it relates to um, the, the gadgets. <sighs> so, I don't know. Yeah. Um, iPhone, Apple, very clever mm. company. Yeah. Been selling the same phone for years. Big up themselves. <laughs> uh, I like some of the features that, that, that if it's true, you know, if it's true, then big up Apple. But I, I can't see the difference right now in terms of the phone. Then take that to kid. You see me? Now nah, tell us I'm gonna get one. I'm gonna go, go on like you see me because that's what Apple Apple have a brainwash now. That's sort of thing. I'm gonna get the 14. Richard, see that? <laughs> but sound like you're not buy it. <laughs> no, no, you hear, you hear what I'm saying? <laughs> if you get it, <laughs> if you get it. Yeah, wink, wink, relatives. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, they've been selling the same phone. The phone looks the same, but um, I trust them with the features. So let's see how it goes. Um, yeah, it's a for it's a, it's a technology work, peeps. It's who hear Samsung come, everybody so come. It's 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 just the way of the world. Okay, we can't afford, it, but <laughs> people can. In any no, no, oh, Jamaica can do it in a Georgia and Richie. Would say times hard, but one stuff phone your job. Remember me told Come you. <laughs> you. You, you want to see the lines at some of these stores when they're dropping crazy, them man. people. Crazy, yeah. crazy, crazy. See some of them on the screen right now. Thank you, I don't know Romy. 14. Yeah. I don't know the 14. Oh, which one that? I know you're 14. Uh, 14, 14, 14 or 2 camera. Whoa. When I back, I saw. Okay. Really? Tell us, it, it, you see, it look, it look, that look like a 12 or 11. I don't even know the difference now. They're my 13. I don't even know how this thing work. Put up a Samsung. I'm going to tell everything about it. <laughs> As bad as that sounds. <laughs> <laughs>